Hello there, first grade friends. In this video, we are going to complete the module 13 review found on Into Math workbook page 411 and 412. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna recommend that you grab an extra sheet of paper, just a plain one that you can show your work on. Plus, it will help you keep track of where you are on your page. Let's go ahead and get started. For these first few problems, we're going to add or subtract to solve. For number one, we are adding 40 and 25. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to add my ones. So I will underline my five and zero because those are in the ones place. I know that zero plus five equals five. Next, I'm going to add my tens. I'll draw a box around those. I know that four plus two equals six. So, 40 plus 25 equals 65. Let's look at number two. We have 50 minus 30. We've learned that there's multiple different ways that we can solve addition and subtraction equations. For this one, we can use our fact families to help us or draw a picture. Let's go ahead and draw a picture. I'm starting with 50, so I'll draw five groups of 10. One, two, three, four, five. I'm subtracting 30, so let's circle three groups of 10 and cross them out. That leaves me with two groups of 10, which is the same as 20. So 50 minus 30 equals 20. We know that five, three, and two are all part of a fact family. Let's look at number three. We have 20 plus 46. Again, let's start by adding our ones. I'm going to underline both numbers that are in the ones place. Zero plus six equals six. Now, let's square off our tens. We'll be adding two plus four. We know that that equals six. Next, let's take a look at number four, 90 minus 50. Let's use a fact family to solve this one. We have the numbers nine, five, and we need to figure out what the third number is that makes up that fact family. We know that four plus five equals nine. So nine minus five equals four. Then we add our zero at the end to make it 40. Number five is 65 plus 22. We know that five plus two equals seven. Six plus two equals eight. Something that can be helpful when you're solving these problems is draw a line down the middle. That way it will help separate your ones and your tens. Number six is 40 plus 49. We know that zero plus nine equals nine. If the ones add up to nine, everything is fine. We don't have to take any numbers next door. Four plus four equals eight. So 40 plus 49 equals 89. Number seven says 80 minus 30. We know that zero minus zero equals zero. We know that eight minus three equals five. So 80 minus 30 equals 50. 
Number eight, 53 plus 38. There's some different ways that we can solve this problem. Let's take a look at two different examples. The first example I'll show you is making a 10. We have 38 and 53. I know that I need just two more numbers to get to the number 10. So, or, I know that I need two more numbers to get to a nice even 40. So, I'm going to borrow two from over here. That leaves me with 51. If I add two over here, it gives me 40. I know that zero plus one equals one. I know that four plus five equals nine. So my answer is 91. Another way we can add this is by using traditional addition. 53 plus 38. We know that 3 plus 8 equals 11, but that's greater than 9. When it's greater than 9, we take the 10 next door. So we leave our 1 from 11 in the 1's place, and we bring that extra 10 next door. 5 plus 3 equals 8, plus 1 more equals 9. Even though we solved those in two different ways, we still got the same answer. For numbers 9 and 10, they want us to fill in the bubble next to the correct answer. Kayla has 58 red buttons and 8 blue buttons. How many buttons does she have? For this one, let's practice making a 10 to solve. We're starting with the number 58. Then we're adding eight blue buttons. Again, I know that if I add two more to this number 58, it will give me a nice even 60. So let's borrow from this eight. Eight minus two equals six. And this 58 will become a 60. Then I just add 60 plus 6, and we know that that equals 66. So, Kayla has 66 buttons. Let's look at number 10. There are 12 jars of peanuts on a shelf. Mr. Grace buys three of them. How many jars of peanuts are on the shelf now? For this one, we can use drawing a picture to help us solve. We're starting with 12. One group of 10 and two ones. We're going to be subtracting three ones. So I will cross off one, two. I've run out of ones, but I know that this one stick is made up of 10 ones. So if I subtract one from this group of 10, that leaves me with nine. Another way you could solve this is by drawing a quick number line. We know that we're starting with the number 12 and we're hopping back three spaces. One, two, three. We can count backwards. 12, 11, 10, 9. We subtracted 3 to get to 9. So there are 9 jars of peanuts on the shelf now. For numbers 11 and 12, they would like for us to continue filling in the bubbles next to the correct answer. Number 11, Delaney has 80 marbles. She gives 20 marbles to her friend. 
How many marbles does Delaney have now? For this one, let's draw a picture to solve. Delaney is starting with 80 marbles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is the same as 80. She gives her friends 20 marbles. So we'll circle two groups of 10 and cross it off. That leaves us with 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. That means Delaney has 60 marbles now. Number 12, Sarah swims 24 laps. Then she swims 25 more laps. How many laps does she swim? Let's go ahead and use traditional addition to solve. Sarah starts by swimming 24 laps. Then she swims 25 more. The word more tells us that we're going to add. 4 plus 5 equals 9. When the 1's add up to 9, everything's fine. 2 plus 2 equals 4. So altogether, Sarah swam 49 laps. For number 15, they'd like for us to use the hundreds chart to solve. Beth counts 54 peaches. Don counts some peaches. They count 74 peaches in all. How many peaches does Don count? We know that Elizabeth, or that Beth counts 54 peaches. I'm going to use a colored pen to circle this on the hundreds chart so that you can see it better. We're starting with 54. Don counts some peaches. We don't know how many, but we know that they count 74 peaches in all. So let's go ahead and circle our number 74. We need to find the difference between both numbers to see how many peaches Don counted. Let's go ahead and move down our hundreds chart to solve. I'm going to jump 10, 20. So this tells me that Don counted 20 peaches. For numbers 14 through 17, we're going to add or subtract. Number 14 is 16 minus 7. Let's go ahead and draw a picture to solve. I'll start by drawing 16 ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Then we're going to subtract 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That leaves us with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 16 minus 7 equals 9. Let's try number 15. 8 plus 5. Let's count on to solve. We'll start with 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then let's add 5 more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That gives us a total of 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 8 plus 5 equals 13. For number 16, we can practice making a 10. 
I have the numbers 6 and 9. I know that 9 is 1 less than 10. So let's borrow 1 from the 6. That leaves us with 5. This will become a 10. We know that 5 plus 10 equals 15. So 6 plus 9 also equals 15. For number 14, we can count on to help us find the sum of this subtraction problem. Let's take a look. Our numbers are 14 and 8. Let's start by drawing 8 circles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then I can count on until I get to the number 14. So we have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I can count how many circles I just added to find the sum. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 14 minus 8 equals 6. Another way we could look at this is by using our doubles facts. We know that 8 plus 8 equals 16. But we're using the number 14. I know that 14 is 2 less than the number 6. So I'm going to subtract 2 from my number 8 to solve the equation. If I have 8 minus 2, that equals 6. Let me draw a picture to help explain further. I'm starting with my doubles fact, 8 plus 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm going to add another 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But remember, my number is 14. I'm going to cross off 2 from this doubles fact to give me 14. So now my 8 plus 8 turns into 8 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, my friends, I hope this video was helpful to you. Tomorrow, you will be taking the module 13 test. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or message me on Class Dojo. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.